Okay, so this is a model that we are going to show you guys how to use the retopology tools that came in with Max 2021. Uh, more importantly is, is the release of Max 2021.3. There's a couple of um, other tools, other modifiers that really help the retopology tools uh, kind of shine through. So um, anyway, uh, let's start. So this is a model that was uh, imported into Max from uh, Civil 3D. And uh, I've actually been working with that uh, that guy in the Tampa office to kind of help develop a, a better workflow uh, between Civil 3D and Max. Um, you, you know, usually, you know, when when you add grade and you add, uh, you know, just elevation change to to the 3D modeling, and it ju it just adds that other level of complexity. So, you know, we've we've had we've struggled with you know importing splines with you know elevation data and all that kind of stuff, and it just never really looked good. It was kind of hard to work with. It was ugly, all the kind of stuff. I mean, I'm gonna turn edges on. <laughs> this is what this looks like, and you know, it it has everything that we need. It's a it's a great model. Um, it just, it, it's not ideal though. I mean, obviously it, it's, it's just one, one big mesh and we need to kind of, you know, separate it out into, uh, you know, into different elements, uh, obviously hardscape, softscape, uh, you know, grass and, and whatnot. And, um, and speaking with, with him, um, he recognizes that there's probably different ways that he could model. I'm not, a am not, uh, too familiar with civil 3d, but knowing that he could model it in a different way or, or a, a more efficient way to kind of uh, help alleviate some of the tasks that I'm needing, needing to do here to kind of um, to extract some of this information here. But uh, let's see, I'm just going to add an edit poly modifier on here. Uh, let's see, where'd you go? Edit poly. All right. And I'm just going to extract this particular, this little piece right here. I know is going to be grass and, you know, obviously there's a, a lot of uh, pieces that I would extract, but this is the first one. So let's see, I'm just going to kind of get most of you here let's see kind of go up obviously there's lots of different ways to select all this kind of stuff uh, we don't need you need you doesn't need to turn into a master class on polygon selection either but this should be pretty close okay so i get get the bulk of it, you guys get the idea. All right, so uh, so now I'm just gonna extract this or, or detach this piece. Um, and we're gonna uh, use the retopo tools on on this guy. So you may ask yourself, you know, why bother? I mean, can't we just use this? I mean, can't we just, you know, send that out, save that out, use it as it is? And, and the answer is for sure, yeah, by all means, we could. Um, you know, it has all the information we need. It's just, uh, there's some, definitely some benefits to using the retopology tools to get it to a better point. Not, not the least of which is, I mean, it just, it'll just look better. You know, you're, you know, working on this model for, for days, weeks, months, you know, it just, you know, having something that looks a little more attractive certainly makes your day a little bit, a little bit better. Um, not the, you know, something else that's pretty important too. If I were to extract this or, or save this down as an FBX and import it into a program such as Lumion or Twin Motion or Epic or whatnot, I'll give you, a, give you an example of what that does here. So that's that model or, or a, a version of it that's imported into Lumion. You can see that triangulated patterns there um, that where, where this is a 3D grass that's that's applied here and just kind of how it distributes. And it's just really, you know, these little artifacty little things. I mean, those those can show up in your renders and it's just not ideal. So I had previously uh, done a retopoed version of it and imported that. And you can you can see that all that all that's gone. It's just a it's just a prettier mesh. It works. It's nice and smooth. There's no facets. There's no no triangulation artifacts in there. So um, that's a pretty pretty significant um, reason um, in and of itself to do it. Um, and here's another one. Um, here is let's see. I can show you. Let's see this PC. The let's see the. Retopo test that exported surface that was retopoed was 223k versus the triangular surface, which is almost literally twice as twice as twice the size. So significant changes um, in that um, area as well. Uh, let's see. Okay, back to Max. Okay, so here we go. So here's our triangulated mesh and. Like I said, with the with 2021.3, there was a couple of new modifiers that came out. Um, one of them, um, I believe, is the mesh uh, mesh cleaner. And 
It'll detect certain problems that just kind of make your mesh a little bit cleaner. Degenerate edges, I do not know what that means, but that sounds bad. I'm just going to go ahead and repair you. And Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and add the subdivide modifier in here. Subdivide. Now, subdivide has obviously been with Max for, for a while, um, but this version that came in with 2021.3 is actually where, you know, it's going to help uh, the retopology modifier really perform its magic. So the subdivide modes that, uh, has different modes now. So this is a typical subdivide that we're, that we're used to. Delaunay, adaptive, variable curvature. I found for this one, the adaptive uh, works the best. Keep your eyes on the polycon over here too. Our, our base mesh has about 10,000 polys. When we, we subdivide it even more, it's going to it's going to go up quite a bit. You know, it's taking those those larger areas, subdividing those even more. And this is a fairly dense mesh to begin with, but it was just kind of triangulated in a weird way that's not going to really lend itself very well to to good uh, retopology. So uh, that helps quite a bit. As a matter of fact, if I were to kind of just show you what the other options are, are like more or less here, it's kind of hard to see on that mesh. So I'm just going to give you a uh, subdivide here. Okay, so you see, you know, <clears throat> typical triangulation makes sense. Um, the Delaunay doesn't seem to do a whole lot different than than that particular one. Adaptive, um, as you can see, and then the variable curvature is pretty interesting too. So it really kind of just subdivides even even more down there. So whichever one seems to work best um, for your project, by, go ahead and, and play around um, with all of them. But like I said, I think the just the adaptive uh, seems to work best on this terrain. So anyway, I'm going to just go ahead and add an edit poly modifier on here just in case I'm going to clean up any any uh, vertices that are close enough to potentially weld here. So we've got a few. I'm going to go ahead and just <clears throat> weld those together. The retopo will actually work on open open surfaces uh, with holes in it, but you know, just the cleaner the be the cleaner the mesh, the better. Um, so anyway, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and throw that reto retopo modifier on here, and as you can see, it comes up here. There's actually three different ways that we can perform the task. Uh, reform is is, in my opinion, the the only one that I would probably really use. I think, from what I understand, the other two were kind of cheaper maybe less accurate versions. Um, so the reform is, I think, the way to go. Obviously, face count, you know, it kind of speaks for itself. Obviously, right now we have 24,000 polygons. We're going to try to reduce it or get to a target of about 5,000 quad tolerance. You know, how close to that do we really need to get? Um, do we need subdivisions to get there to that particular number? And then, of course, these these other regularized anisotropy ad adaptivity. It's all about kind of how the how the the shape of the polygons um, or the quads as it gets created, you know, the squareness of them, um, you know, the, you know, angles to curves, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I haven't really gotten a whole lot of chance to use the auto edge in, in smoothing groups, but um, I can imagine, you know, if you're if you're trying to retopo a, a, an interesting statue or something like that that you might have got from some other random, you know, resource on the internet or whatnot in the, in the, in the geometry is kind of garbage those those will kind of help you um, retain those uh, hard edges smooth edges whatnot so okay so let's just go ahead and compute i'm going to leave it at the target um, face count for now and just kind of see where it takes us obviously the the bigger more complicated the mesh the the longer it takes but i usually haven't had too much trouble with it let's see so it looks like it's chugging right along and there we go 23 seconds look at that <laughs> it's just really pretty amazing um and it's you know it's i guess it's not perfect i mean there's some there's some yeah well it actually it looks looks pretty darn good to me um so yeah so there so there you have it and you know and, and another one of the like a, a benefits obviously the file size and all that kind of stuff but you know just to, to be able to have uh so much more opportunity to work with this you know for example um in this particular project uh over over up in this area there's a a, a fairly steep grade change and we had to put a fence um around there so the the ground didn't actually you know um meet the bottom of the fence so i'm not going to have the fence go down you know an extra you know three feet in a in a one foot grade change so um 
you're now now you're just much better positioned to do certain things like oh, where's my put a little edit edit poly in there and um you know now you're able to do things like you know very subtle changes that would be much more difficult to do you know beforehand you know maybe whoop, you probably wouldn't want necessarily that that high but this is exactly what i had to do to kind of make make the the ground kind of meet that fence just a very subtle subtle manipulation of the terrain um, which would be just more difficult for that and you know and if you need the mesh for um to get even even denser for uh, for displacement maps or you know um anything like that so this is really just a great way to um enhance your model uh give you more more options to model with it's, it looks prettier it's you know smaller file sizes it's just it's just a great new tool and uh was glad to be able to to play around with it and uh let's see i'm gonna turn my there's my layer explorers down here somewhere and uh show you kind of the end result so yeah so there we go so this is the same same idea and uh so over here is where i was talking about that fence fencing i was able to just really quickly just subtly uh, bring up that terrain to meet that fence over in that area and it just worked out really well so really pleased with um you know that new tool and uh, oh another another thing um having putting the retopo tools on here i was able to then model uh very quickly um in plan uh these you know parking stripes and then because everything was so nice and and tidy and organized and whatnot i was then able to use the conform tools just to push the uh, the parking stripes down on on the uh, the pavement and it was just a much easier way to to kind of get parking stripes on there just add, added a little um retopo tools on there just to give those some some extra attention then i could optimize this now um if i wanted to get rid of you know all those internal um edges and whatnot but i thought that was a really pretty cool pretty cool way to to enhance that model this way as well so Anyway, um, I will open it up to questions and uh, go ahead and play with it and, and have some fun.